Hello and welcome to Total Football Analysis. The Euro 2020 round of 16 has thrown some interesting ties and the game between the Netherlands and Czech Republic in Budapest is one of them. In this tactical preview, we will attempt to predict both sides' tactics and approach to this match and point out areas of strength and weaknesses that could be pivotal to the result. So, before we get stuck into things, if you are new or you haven't yet, make sure you are subscribed to the channel, make sure you like this video most importantly and also you can share it. But for now, let's get started. The ball is likely to stick with the majority of the side that played throughout the group stages of the Euro 2020 so far, with Weghorst expected to come back into the side despite Marlon's impressive display against North Macedonia. The ball did change the Netherlands shape to a 4-3-3 at half time in the last group match against North Macedonia, but he is likely to stick with the 3-4-1-2 that has served the Orange so well. The Czech are also unlikely to make too many changes to their starting 11, although one will be forced, with Jan Borgio the regular left back suspended for this match. Pavel Kadazarbek, the Hertha Berlin fullback, is expected to replace him. The strike pairing of Weghorst and Memphis is the one we are likely to see from the Netherlands in this game, even with Marlin's impressive performance when picked from the start in the last group match. The biggest reason for this is that the Netherlands are likely to have majority of the possession against the Czechs and Marlin's biggest strength is when he has space to attack into, usually in transition. Weghorst is the better option for matches when opponents are likely to cede possession and territory, since his presence occupies multiple defenders and creates space in front of the defence for the likes of Memphis and Wijnaldum and also forces the opposition back line to stay narrow, which will give Dumfries the sort of attacking space that he has thrived in already at the tournament. This here is a good example of how Weghorst helps create space for his teammates. As Frankie de Jong moves forward with the ball, Weghorst makes a run in behind the Austrian defence and his presence forces the backline deeper, which allows Memphis to be in a lot of space outside of the penalty area. De Jong would pass to Memphis here and with the now Barcelona man able to take a shot on goal in a lot of space due to Weghorst's presence. Another example of the Wolfsburg's man's tendency to attract defenders towards him can be seen here. As De Jong gets the ball into the box, note how there are three Ukrainian defenders close to Wekos and this means that Denzel Dumfries is able to move into the penalty area completely unmarked. This here is also a good example of how advanced Dumfries has been getting forward for the Netherlands and whilst his runs forward from a deeper position have played a big role in the size attacking strategy, a big reason why he has space in the first place to do so is Wekos' presence. With Weghorst as a fixed central presence, this will also give Memphis the license to roam, dropping deep and going out wide, which will pose questions of the Czech defence. Weghorst has stayed on the shoulder of the Ukrainian defence here, which means that Memphis is able to drop deep and receive the ball from Ronaldo in areas of space between the lines. This would also be the case if Marlon starts instead. The PSV attacker is quite similar to Memphis in that he also prefers to drop off and roam from the back line and this would mean that the Netherlands would not have a central presence to attack crosses and force the defensive line deeper. So with this and the fact that the Czechs are likely to cede possession and sit deep, Weghorst would be the best option as he can provide a fixed target for crosses and passes centrally and can also play quick combinations with the likes of Memphis to open up space. As we can see here, Memphis has dropped off the Ukrainian defence line, while Weghorst has moved away with the defender not tracking him tightly, Wijnaldum plays the ball to Memphis here, who is able to turn and run with the ball before laying it off to Weghorst. Both players are in space in front of the Ukrainian defence and therefore are able to play quick passes to each other in this manner. Memphis continues his run into the box after laying it off to Weghorst, who moves into space vacated by his teammate and gets a shot off on target. However, Marlon could also offer an interesting option either from the start or off the bench. Marlon was impressive in the win over North Macedonia, with the PSV attacker constantly causing trouble with his positioning and running. While he is a very similar player to Memphis, there was enough evidence in that match of the duo working well together. These are the sort of positions that Memphis and Marlon will take up if played together, between the lines dropping off from the Czech Republic back line to try and force them to move higher up the pitch and consequently create space to run into behind. Here, Ryan Gravenberch is on the ball, Memphis has pulled out to the left between the Macedonian centre-back and the right-back while Marlon stays central. Gravenberch passes to De Jong in front of Marlon, but the ball rolls to Marlon who can then play in Memphis into the box. 
The two attackers, if paired together at any point against Czech Republic, will float around in this manner, attempting to suck the Czech defenders higher up the pitch and create space for each other or allow them to run in behind. Another crucial part of the Netherlands attacking strategy so far at the Euro 2020 has been Dumfries burst forwards from right wing back. The PSV defender has been far more advanced than Patrick van Arnhol on the opposite flank and while we have shown how Weghorst's presence has helped create space for him, the 25 year old also deserves credit for his attacking instincts. With the Czech Republic likely to play with a back four, there will be once again space on the flanks for the Dutch wing back to exploit and Dumfries in particular could benefit from this. These images show just how advanced Dumfries can get, particularly when the ball is on the Dutch left flank, creating space for a switch of play. Another example here of how Weghorst and Ronaldo's central presence attract defenders towards them, especially in the penalty area, therefore leaving Dumfries free at the back post. With the young playing on the left of the midfield pivot, he will often be able to receive possession and play an accurate pass out to the advancing Dumfries on the right. This will be a key attacking strategy for the Netherlands and the Czech Republic will need to track Dumfries at all times to prevent him from enjoying that sort of space. While the Netherlands have been quite good in the group stages so far, there have been signs of weakness, especially defensively. The Dutch defenders are often slow to get out and close down attackers who are dropping off from the back line and can get caught in no man's land, creating an opportunity for a shot or a pass from a dangerous area. Here, as the Macedonian right back advances on the ball, Goran Pandev drops to receive possession, with Stefan de Vrij not getting tight to him. At the same time, Ivan Tchaikovsky runs in between Blint and Van Aanholt, with neither player picking him up. As a result, Pandev is able to play a first time pass to Tchaikovsky, who runs through and finishes, but the goal is disallowed for offside. While this may have been a successful attempt to play the offside trap, it was a very tight call, and both Blint and De Vrij were slow to react to the Macedonian attacker's movement. This is a repeated trend throughout the group phase, something that Janko, Schick and De Rida could look to exploit through clever movement and well-timed runs. Another example of a similar situation here from the game against Ukraine, Andrei Yarmolenko has the ball out on the right and Roman Yaremchuk drops off centrally to offer a passing option. Yarmolenko plays the pass to him and moves infield with Owen Wijnal and Nathan Aki both retreating into the box anticipating a run behind and therefore miles away from him. Yaremchuk is able to lay the ball off for the West Ham attacker who takes a touch and curls a fantastic shot into the top corner. Our last example here takes us back to the game against North Macedonia. With North Macedonia building their attack down the left, Ademi plays a pass to Pandev before running infield. Once again, know how Pandev has managed to create a yard of space between him and De Frey, while Blint, having moved over from the rest of the Dutch defence as Macedonia attacked down the left, has stepped up to try and cover Tchaikovsky and is caught horribly out of position here. Pandev can play a first time flick towards Tchaikovsky here, with Blint in no position to cut it out and the 28 year old crashes a shot off the far post. Note how he could have easily just played a pass for Ademi next to him or even attempted a slightly more difficult pass to Pandev in the box, there is no pressure on him. The Dutch midfield is to blame here as they failed to protect the central areas adequately and this was an issue in the first match against Ukraine as well on this occasion. While the Netherlands have been quite good in possession, their defensive play has not been up to the mark occasionally and the Czech Republic have a powerful striker in Schick who can quite easily play a similar role, dropping off to link up whilst others advance from a deeper position. And unfortunately, that wraps up this tactical analysis. My name is RDF and it has been a pleasure recording this video for you guys and don't forget, if you are new or you haven't yet, make sure you are subscribed to this channel, make sure you like this video and also, you can share it. I'll speak to you guys soon and stay safe.